don't live in for half the year. It's not fair. It's f the system's f I'm so drained. I'm mentally, I'm mentally drained. I want to be happy. I want my own place. I'm trying, but... Yeah. I think it only becomes hopeless if people give up and stop trying. And we're definitely not going to stop trying. This is Talk TV. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unbiased and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to abandon and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, missing. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> that, that oh, a, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. How are you this morning? I hope you're well and happy this morning. I'm just turning myself up. There we go. Oh, that's better. Oh, hello. I didn't realise it was you in there. Hello. Oh, there's someone new on the knobs and buttons today. Hello. Hello. Are you all right? You might say new. New as in someone who we don't normally see on the morning. No, no, no. Keep the music going. Keep the music going. Thank you. God, I do everything round here. I know, you're new. You're new, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Uh, how are you? How are you all today? I hope you're well. It's Christo. Yes, I'm Christo. 
here uh, on uh, Talk TV. Now, you'll have to, I'll have to apologise to you because um, I- I'm not happy this morning. I am not happy this morning because this studio is a disgusting mess because apparently there was some sort of birthday party in here late night last night where uh, chocolate cake was being shoved down people's gullets. And it's all over the floor, it's all over the desk, it's absolutely everywhere, because uh, people are Neanderthals, unfortunately. And um, it's disgusting. Did any of the chocolate cake actually end up in anyone's mouth, do we think? I mean, I'd be amazed if it did. Honestly, you should see the state of the floor down here, honestly. Well, I hope it's chocolate cake. I hope it is. I don't know what else it could be. Um, but other than that, I'm in a wonderful mood. I tell you who isn't in a wonderful mood. Angela Rayner. More pressure for her this morning. We'll talk about that. They found the neighbour that said that she uh, wasn't being very honest. So uh, we'll talk about that. Find out how your holiday plans could be scuppered this summer. Yes, you might be planning a flight somewhere, but hey, no, they're going to be disrupted. And I'll tell you why. And uh, I'll give you a clue. It involves Just Stop Oil. And uh, also, we'll talk about uh, Sadiq Khan. You know, the repellent little runt. Apparently, he's denying those pay-per-mile plans here in London, which I think means that we can 100% confirm that pay-per-mile is happening. Would you be happy to see your GP down the line as well, using some sort of GPS system? We'll talk about that. We'll talk more about the Canary Islands as well. They don't want you going on holiday there. However, they don't want anyone going on holiday there either. Maybe just the point and them should be hand in hand. So lots for us to discuss. It's Christo and it's Talk TV. Don't forget, we've also got Kinsey with her Right Royal Roundup in about 20 minutes time. We've got Ingrid Tarrant. She is as mad as a bladder on a stick and she is going to be here after six o'clock looking at the newspapers. I, I say that she's insane. I always say that with love. I can't get the sound right in my ears this morning. Hang on. That's the other thing, because you know what David Ball says to me? He always says to me, you know David Ball does the show after me. You know David Ball is, don't you? Yeah. You know David. Doctor. Really bad shirts. Awful blonde highlights. Yeah, that's him. And um, he does the show after me. And... He always says, oh, my God, you have it so quiet. I really am careful with my earphones and I have them just loud enough so that I can hear what's going on. So I always have to have a little fiddle. So when you see me fiddling below the desk, that's what I'm doing, I assure you, Um, because I don't want to go deaf, because every single person who's worked in radio um, or television long term is deaf. And, so, and that's because they have earphones on constantly and it's very, very loud in their ears. So if you see me fiddling down here, I'm just trying to get the level right. Um, oh, I tell you, talking of a fiddle, let's talk about Angela Rayner because it's, oh, it's piling on that pressure. Look at the mail on Sunday today. House sale document that could nail Rayner. That's right. The neighbour who called the Labour deputy an effing liar... Oh dear. Talks to the police as we reveal she signed key papers in two homes round. Now, if you remember, Angela Rayner, council house raider, lived in two houses. Well, she claimed she lived separately from her partner, right? And that, well, look, uh, do you know what? Let's go back. Let's go back to when all this happened. She married her partner, right? And then didn't move in with her partner. She lived separately. So that when it came to selling her house that she owned, that she'd bought off the council, because she said that it was her principal residence and that the place of her husband was somewhere she didn't live, she just visited now and then, she wasn't subject to paying capital gains tax when she sold it. She got a 25% council tax discount because she was a single person allegedly living there and uh, a couple of other things besides. Fine. Now... The Mail on Sunday have obviously been looking into this for weeks and weeks. They found neighbours of her husband saying, well, hang on, no, she was living with her husband every single day. She was going to work every day. She was coming home from work. Then the Mail on Sunday found social media posts of her at her husband's house, not this principal property, um, 
the, the, this husband's house and the social media posts were saying, oh, look, I've just arrived home. Oh, look, I'm cooking dinner at home. And the home was her husband's house. Now they've spoken to the neighbour and found the document from the house sale, right, of the house that she claimed she was living in. And the neighbour was the next-door neighbour of her husband. And so the male are asking, well, hang on, why didn't you ask one of the neighbours next door to the house you were selling? Why were you asking the neighbour of the house where you said that you weren't living to sign the document as a witness of the house sale? And bearing in mind this is the neighbour that was calling her an effing liar, um, it doesn't look good for Angela Rayner. So she still denies that there's any kind of impropriety, any kind of tax fiddle. She was always living in this separate address to her husband because, again... Who doesn't get married and then live completely separately from their partner? Completely normal behaviour. So it's all a little bit odd, isn't it? And of course, the pressure is mounting on her. Now, people are saying, look, it's a non-story. But when there was a police investigation into the Conservatives, you know, Boris Johnson, the big Randy buffoon and his parties he was having... Angela Rayner was very quick to, say, quick to say, look, there is a police investigation. You've got to resign. You've got to stand down. You've got to be suspended. But she's not. So they found this document from the 20th of March 2015, the Land Registry Transfer of Title, and the witness is the lady that lived next door to her husband. And as I said... The male are saying, well, why did you have her sign it? If you were living in the house that you were selling, why didn't you go to one of the neighbours there? Now, I mean, is this a little bit of a tenuous link? Is this story running out of steam now? Um, if Vicarage Road, which was the main residence, was not her main residence, she could be liable for tax on the £48,500 she made on its sale exposing her to a liability of up to £3,500. That's aside from the council house discount, sorry, council tax discount she got as a 25% uh, discount for being a single person. So they've examined this transfer of deed. But the neighbour, as I said, and I'll quote the neighbour, if she says she doesn't, didn't, wasn't living there, then she is a liar. She definitely lived at that house. She can't say she didn't live there. I would swear on the Bible to that. Um, this is Mrs Hampson, her name is, interviewed on Friday by detectives who took a statement from her and she'd been living in that house for 60 years. She says, I spoke to two detectives. Uh, Ms Rayner was living here from 2010. She definitely lived there from 2010. She was still there in 2014. She was living here. I used to see her go off in her car, then come back in the night time. If that's not living here, then what is? The pensioner recalls Ms Rayner's eldest son, Ryan, living in the loft bedroom and making a lot of noise on his drum kit. She said, my son came home from work one night and asked Ryan to stop it. But uh, so Ms Rayner is facing intense pressure. Oh, and the other impropriety that she's alleged is, of course, the electoral side of things, because if she was on the electoral roll in one house but not living there, that's also a big boo-boo. So it's not looking good for her. Stephen in Manchester has called about this. Morning to you, Stephen. How are you doing, big cuddly bear? I've not uh, talked to you for a long time. How are you? <laughs> I'm your, of course I'm your big cuddly bear, Stephen. You are my big cuddly bear. <laughs> Listen, the thing is yes. about this, Yeah. you can't only just be a shoplifter. You can't only just be a, a drink driver. If she's done something wrong, allegedly, you yeah. can use that word now, then it doesn't matter whether it's 1,500 quid or 5 million quid. It, it's wrong. Do you know well, what I mean? I, I agree, but a lot of people are saying that the amount is a pittance and actually when you look at the owners of the mail that, that are looking into this story... Critical? Well, hang on, let me just finish. When you're looking at, you know, the non-dom status of the Prime Minister's wife, those are millions, huge sums of money. This is a single mum who might have screwed a little bit of money out the system... And so they're not comparable. What would you say to that? I don't like uh, the non-dom stuff with that. And they got caught out and fair enough and stuff like that. But, look, you can't compare um, 
Who's the dude that got done for five million quid tax evasion, not tax fraud? Um, well, there's there's tax avoidance and evasion. Evasion yeah, is the fraud. Avoidance, avoidance is the, like the, not, the doing it, not doing the proper thing. Yeah, the, well, there's quite a few. I mean, just, just take your yeah. pick. But uh, I think well, it's avoidance that's the one that is legal, but is uh, people consider to be immoral. You can't you can't just be a shoplifter, can you? You either are or you're not. And if you've done something wrong, then Look, listen, I'm not going to have a pop at her. Personally, I think what she's done is amazing to, you know, if you look at her background, stuff like that, Christo. Um, it is, but if and, you are uh, someone who costs... Well, if you've done something wrong, you can't, like, now Now they're going on about, um, well, she had a kitchen done, so that might... Um, come on, man. This is like pushing the uh, ticket a little bit too far. The thing is... You've either done something wrong or you've not. It's as simple as that. Stand up and get on with it. You, you know that. Well, I, I, again, I don't think as well this would be considered avoidance. It would be considered evasion. Because if you're saying you were yeah, living somewhere and about, you were not, that's about, about, yeah, that's well, evasion. Christo, Christo, they're now talking about, like, throwing in, well, she had her kitchen renovated, so that would then... Um, Offset some of the, the tax. Yeah, it'll upset this. You're thinking, come on, man. You've but then why would they... I see, the kitchen thing is interesting because why would they be bringing up the kitchen thing? Because they're looking for a way out, Christo. Yes, I know that, but 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 the thing is, again, I, as someone who owns a rental property, I'm sort of aware of these sorts of things. And the only time that repairs on that property become relevant... Oh, I'm talking to Clement Attlee now, aren't I? Yeah, I mean, you you're, you've got your Labour head on, haven't you? I've got my Labour, I've got every head listen, on. Listen, you, no, 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 you, but Stephen, let me just say this. Because right, if right. you if you live in the property, right, if you it's your main residence and you do the kitchen yeah. up and you sell it and whatever, then, then it's your main property. So the kitchen is irrelevant how much you've spent on it because there is so no what, tax. What happens, what happens if, what happens if the neighbours go, actually, she wasn't living there. I mean, then you're liable to capital gains tax, but then the kitchen becomes relevant. So I don't know why they're bringing the kitchen oh, into on, it unless they're admitting she didn't we, live we there. got rid of a prime minister over cake. No, that was cake. over, that was over, that was more than cake. Oh, come and, on, and Stephen. By the way, by the way, the current prime minister was there eating cake. Well, because they're, so, they're all mean, a bunch all, of, does, of, of liars. But, B L A L L F, isn't but, it? Really? But, Come on. But Boris Johnson was a liar because he was claiming he did not know what well, the rules knew, were. Well, we're not going into that. What, we knew he was a liar. It was, was, job, it was not over cake. It was not over cake. It was about rules that he mate. implemented. The, is, the current prime minister was there eating cake. By the way, he got a, did he get a fine? I don't know. I think he got one fine as well. But it was different. Boris Johnson was 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 different. Boris Johnson lied so repeatedly about so many things, and the one thing that got him was the the cake. It's, it's all absolute utter pants, mate. But you're you right. They're all mean? awful. I, I mean, they're all is, absolutely the dreadful. The thing is, if she's done something wrong. Stand up. The fact that Benny the Ball, um, Keir Starmer's, uh, he looks like Benny the Ball, like a top cat, doesn't he? Right? He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's like distancing himself from it. Tells me that she's look, toast. She's toast. She's toast, mate. She's right? toast in her new kitchen. You, you can't, you can't go round asking people to resign, calling people scumbags in the houses of parliament, like she did and stuff like that. And then, all, and you know what? Do you know what the biggest hypocrisy is? And the biggest hypocrisy is she bought a, a council house. A husband, I believe, I'm saying allegedly, because I was saying then get you sued or me, bought a council house. Then she turns around and said, don't buy council houses, it's absolute trash. Get lost, a bunch of hypocrites. You know it, I know it, end of Christo. Yeah, but then you can't, you can't just um, claim that she's a hypocrite. They all are. They all are. They all are. Yeah, look at look what's going on in Fylde now with that lunatic in Fylde. How did he even get, like, um... Come on, man. Well, let's not we're crack all that all one all open. But listen, Stephen, lunatic. thank you. Oh, by the way, Stephen, quick question. Yeah, uh, it, uh, as long as it's not geography. History, well, it is sort of that. geography related, actually. Are yeah. you planning on going on holiday this summer? No. No? You're not, not planning a little trip abroad? No, Why? no, I don't like flying, Chris Dog. Uh, well, do you know what? Do you know what? Let what? me do an advert for England. Listen, anyone wants a holiday, go to North Wales or the Lake District. It's beautiful. You'll have so much fun there. 
But what you might not have is sun. I mean, I do love the UK. You're absolutely right, but you don't yeah, get sunshine. No, sun, Chris, though. Come on, man. You don't get... You're not guaranteed sunshine. Oh, right. well, you go to, to I Greece... I want skin cancer in about 13 years. Go to the Lake District. Go to Scotland. I don't go want to, rain. So I, I want beautiful. sunshine. I, I want scorchio. I want sunshine. I want to sunbathe. I want to sit on a beach you, you, with you a know, cocktail. I, you know I love talking to you. I always call you the big cuddly bear, and you are, but you're way off my All right. Buy, buy Britain. Go on holiday to the Lake District, to Scotland. Stephen, I don't want to fall out with go, you. I don't want to fall out with go you. Go to Pit Lockery. Go to Pit Lockery. But you, you may as well, the way you're going on. What? You may as well join Just a Poil. Thank you, Stephen. That's Stephen in Manchester. He thinks we should all holiday in the UK. I mean, he's got a lovely point. The UK is beautiful. I love the Cotswolds. I love going down to Somerset. I've never been to the Lake District, but I would love to go there. I love North Wales, beautiful part of the world. But you don't get the weather. And I think it's nice to be able to be guaranteed a little bit of sunshine. Just a bit, you know, a couple of weeks away. I love going on holiday. I abs I love. I hate the experience. I mean, I hate getting on some trashy budget airline, which is the only place that flies to wherever you're going now, and going through the airport, which is always just full of undesirables, and uh, getting on a plane, right? Getting on an aeroplane, and there's only one class. Like, everyone sat in the same cabin. I mean, what's that all about? I don't understand that at all. Um, but... Getting to the destination is lovely, absolutely lovely. But guess what? These lunatics want to spoil your holiday. Just a boil are threatening to wreck your holiday. Eco activists, including Ingolo Rumbelow. Do you remember Ingolo Rumbelow? Was it? No, no. Her, what was her name? Indigo. Indigo Rumbelow, um, and also Phoebe Plummer. <laughs> Also middle class, aren't they? They're also painfully middle class. When ski season, I mean, it's Cours Cheval. The, the, the slopes are, are starting to melt a bit now, isn't it? It's probably why they're ramping up. They're just to boil stuff. Um, she cheered as she told a meeting of hardcore campaigners the group plans to halt flights by storming airports across the UK and Europe. Well, you know the solution to this, don't you? Take a leaf out of Harry and Meghan's book and fly by private jet. You know, that is, go to an obscure airport with your private jet and do that. One fed up traveller said, if this goes ahead, it will be an absolute kick in the teeth for family. So we'll talk about that coming up next. And uh, we've got the right Royal Roundup as well with Kinsey in about 10 minutes time. So lots between now and seven o'clock all here live. It's Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested 
alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minutes, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Morning, it's Christo here on Talk TV. Very interesting text here from Sue. Well, actually, it's a, it's a WhatsApp. No, it's not a WhatsApp. What is it? It's 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 the thing that we never know the name of now. Twitter X, Twitter X thing. Um, why do you think the men on Sunday are targeting Angela Rayner but not saying anything about all the Tory MPs currently suspended, um, including one of one who had a sex hostage? I don't know about that one. But, you know, you never know. I mean, you're, I think that is a fair comment, that there's an awful lot going on. But I suppose the, the argument would be that they are suspended, pending whether that is something that is happening or not. Now, the sheer numbers, if the numbers you're saying are correct, um, is a worry. But if they are suspended, then some sort of due process is taking place. Angela Rayner has not been suspended and is still standing firm that she's done nothing wrong. So I would argue that that's the difference, perhaps not in severity of accusation, but the difference between someone who's been suspended and someone who hasn't. Um, well, 100% cause fights, says Joe. A few just up oil people will be laid out if they ruin people's holidays, say Joe. Well, the problem is, Joe, because we're talking about this as well, as the extra pressure on Angela Rayner, just a boil threatening to wreck holidays. Um, all it would take is a couple of drones. You know, they don't even need to storm the airports. All they would need is a couple of drones. And they could then disrupt the airports massively. So airports are quite vulnerable when it comes to this sort of thing. Let's talk to Linda in London. Morning to you, Linda. Morning. Now, tell me, Linda, are you planning a holiday this summer? Oh, yeah, don't you. Completely depressed me. Where do you... And you've given them ideas about the drones. Oh, yeah, because, yeah because they wouldn't have thought of that without me, Linda. Come on. Well they're, not, well, they're clearly not very intelligent, so maybe they wouldn't have. What do you think of uh, them doing that? Where are you planning on going on holiday, by the way? We're going to Mallorca. Mallorca. Oh, that yes. sounds lovely. So let, let, let's picture it. You get to the airport. Which airport are you flying from? Uh, Stansted. Stansted. All right. And you get there, and suddenly there's a there's a there's a thing on the board. Delayed, 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 delayed. And you find out that there are some people in orange, and they've surrounded the check-in desks, and you can't go anywhere. What are you going to do, Linda? Go full Linda on them, and no one needs that. Oh. Oh, that sounds ugly, Linda. It, it is. I would, if I get videoed, I'll go viral. Well, the thing is, they, they held me up once. Oh, I know, when you were in Holborn. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. when I was in Holborn. And I, I confronted them because I said that, that they... One of the demands that they have on their website, on one of their blogs, is that they, there needs to be research put into the... Uh, technology required to transition exactly. from oil. So th it's sort of an admission that we don't have the technology in place yet to actually just stop oil. Well, a lot of them are hypocrites as well. I know a young person that does all this just stop oil stuff, not directly um, involved in protest, but other things like social media things for them. 
I know for an absolute fact that that person flew on planes five times last year. And I just think, you hypocrite. I don't understand why it isn't, rather than just stop oil, um, it, it, I mean, it's not as catchy, but just come up with technology, meaning that we can still use oil, please. That that would be what I would be demanding. I mean, it's not as catchy. It, yeah, if the technology was there and the government wasn't doing enough, but they, but I think they're doing quite a lot. I mean, living in London, you can't drive anywhere. You can't do anything because of low emissions. So I think they're actually doing quite a lot. And it's going to make zero difference because of places like China, India. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make a difference. We're all being hammered yeah. and those places are just laughing at us. I mean, they are literally laughing at us, saying, what the hell are you doing? Why are you hammering every single resident, making every single person broke in all the cities in which you live? And in actual fact, we're, we're thriving. We're having a whale of a time. Well, they've all, they've just, I've noticed they've just reversed, actually, in Wales on some of the roads, haven't they? They've just reversed the 20 mile an hour limit. You know, if you drive on the M4, which is just going out of London, there's a stretch that's been 60 miles an hour for as long as I can remember because of emissions, because of emissions. And, oh, it's, and it's the stretch next to Heathrow Airport. So, I mean, as if cars going 10 miles an hour slower is going to affect the emissions from the airport. Ridiculous. It, it's nuts, Christo, it's nuts. Um, all right, listen, Linda, just one sentence on Angela Rayner. Um, I actually don't like how the whole thing's being framed by her colleagues, actually, because every time I hear one of her Labour uh, colleagues defending her, they're saying, oh, well, you know, she, why are they attacking a working class woman? As if working class people are a bit thick and need to be, you know, let off things because they obviously didn't understand what was going on. Well, that's, why that's does it matter? sort of the Labour USP, isn't it? You know, Angela mm. Rayner, single mum, Sadiq Khan, my dad was a bus driver. You know, it's all of that kind of nonsense, isn't it? It is. I've missed our chats, Chris. Oh, Linda, well, right, you have to call yeah. me again soon, all right, my love? I'll try. All right, Thanks. you take care. That's Linda in London. Now from London to Los Angeles, because let's get you up to date with yet another Right Royal Roundup. Kinsey's Right Royal Roundup. Oh, she's royalty in our eyes. She was on television, Channel 5, I believe, last night, and now she's here with us. Hello, Kinsey Schofield. Hi. Technically, while I was on Channel 5, I was whale-watching today, and I saw... I mean, I'm not... I, I'm not kidding. I think I saw 20 whales. It was the greatest whale-watching excursion of my life. Where? Uh, down the street from my house. Where, I'm not going to say exactly where I live, but I go whale-watching about every two weeks, and I might see, like, a blow far in the distance but they were like don't don't even start with me Christo what? it's what? a little what? too early for that what I think there's nothing there's 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 nothing more fulfilling than a blow first thing but they these whales we saw fin whales so many of them they were so close to the boat and I was just in heaven I love whale watching um I like whales I like dolphins as well do you only dolphins where you are uh, like thousands. Oh my God! I'm wearing my dolphin necklace. You don't know this. You've gotten me off on my. You've got me off on my hobbies now. I'm well, going crazy. If you actually, you know, ever invited me to LA, I would come. I would come and watch the dolphins with you any day. Oh my gosh! You have to. They have. They're the babies are out right now. I'll send you a video. The babies are out. Oh, that would be. I, I love dolphins. I think they're just beautiful. Dolphins, elephants, and dogs are my favorite animals. I love those things too. Oh, oh, you see, we're a match made in heaven. This is why we get on so well. <laughs> well, from let's go from whales to whales. Ah, very good, very, very good. Because of course, um, well, where, where do you want to start? You want to? You, you go first. Go on, you go. Well, I'll just quickly ask you because everybody's heard. Um, everybody's heard about it this week. I'd love to know your reaction to seeing Prince William for the first time. Him. Talk, him thanking the woman that handed him the get well soon cards for uh, King Charles and the Princess of Wales. He had this very uh, authentic reaction to receiving those cards when he was out in Surrey. Um, and uh, what was your response? Did you did you see some of that video and what did you think? Yeah, I liked that where he said that he was looking after them or words to that effect, mm -hmm. which I thought were really nice. But I saw as well some of the naysayers online uh, criticising because he was uh, working in this food bank centre, the food distribution 
centre and he was pictured and, and there was video of him unloading um, some of the food bank items. We're just showing some of that on our screen now. And, and, and people are saying, well, as if he works there, why on earth was he showing that? What a load of nonsense. But the whole point is, of course, he's not going to work there all day or work there for a week. It's getting a photo call so that therefore it can raise publicity, raise the profile of the cause and hopefully get people to either volunteer or donate. So it, uh, I think I think some of the criticism is a bit stupid, if you ask me. I, I totally agree. Um, so let me I, I'm trying to figure I'm trying to remember what the name of that is, because if we're going to make the point that he it, it was a surplus food risk, uh, redistribution charity. I do want to make sure that if we're going to bring it up, we should probably give it the give it the proper credit. But yeah, this is what they all do. They show up and they show us what the process it was, is. It was surplus to supper in Sunbury surplus. on Thames. That that's where. Yeah. He was, and that was where he received some of the cards. And like I say, he was pictured and videoed unloading um, some of the, the vans. That is royal duty. That is what you do. You don't actually go and work there for weeks on end. You highlight the work and you, you, you give a morale boost to the people there and you meet people and hopefully then you raise the profile of the charity. So I don't know why what people were criticising him. Video? What was the video of Prince Harry? Was he racing Usain Bolt? Do you guys think that that's what he does on a typical Tuesday? That was not what he does on a typical Tuesday. That was a photo call. That was the objective was to get attention for a very specific, uh, you know, project. You, that's what they do. Do you know nowadays? I swear to goodness, I swear, if Princess Diana, God rest her soul, was pictured shaking the hands of an AIDS patient as she was, they would say online, well, why isn't she curing AIDS? Why isn't she working in the laboratory? Why is she just turned up to, to shake people's hands? That's what social media would say about her if it was in the year 2024, I swear. Well, and I did learn something interesting from this engagement um, that I'd never even thought about before. Uh, allegedly, one of the biggest places that food is wasted is not at our grocery store, is not at, you know, whatever buffet is in town, but it's at the airports. And when Prince William learned that, he said, oh, I know somebody at so-and-so airport I'm going to connect you to. Um, so, how, I mean, I think that that's also something interesting that he does. He has those contacts. He has no political sway. But people love him, they want to know him, and he can connect to people that, you know, now instead of getting tossed into the dumpster, the airport might find a, a partner and that food might be donated somewhere. So something good can come out of this meeting. Yeah, that is good stuff. And of course, you're right, they don't have political power, but what they have and what the late Queen had in absolute spades was the power of soft diplomacy. That's the power that they have politically, i.e., you know, we'll, we'll lay on a glam bash, we'll lay on a proper state dinner, we'll, you know, the Queen will, will have stuck on a sparkly dress and a purple uh, uh, sash and uh, uh, wowed all of these presidents and that sort of oils the wheels a little bit for the actual political diplomacy. And again, a lot of people just don't see that. They don't, they don't understand that that is what we have in our royal family and just want to sort of run it down when they're actually one of the best assets, the best weapons that we have. You don't have them in the States, do you? I have Joe Biden. I have oh. Joe Biden. He just, who recently announced that his uncle was eaten by human beings, which I, Army Hammer denies the allegations. I don't think it's true. <laughs> Joe Biden claimed that his, his family were eaten by human beings. Yes. Does Joe Biden know where he is most of the time? Is it Joe Biden? I've seen online people who don't think it's Joe Biden. They think that there are multiple Joe Bidens on Twitter. Oh, well, those, I believe after everything I've witnessed in the last, you know, three, four months, I, I'm not surprised to hear that. You know, it, that is also the latest conspiracy theory, isn't it? That there are multiple Princess Catherines, there are multiple Melania Trumps, there are multiple Joe Bidens. When did that there's become multiple, a thing? Um, it, yeah, there's multiple uh, Vladimir Putins. Yes. Like they're always like, is this the real Vladimir Putin? No, 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 just, uh, but sort of dictators, you, you, you could kind of, you know, because I think Saddam Hussein um, had 
a few body doubles because their life was in such danger all the time and there were always assassination attempts. But why would you have multiple Melanias? Well, I mean, her fashion is pretty fierce. Uh, I would, you know, I take notes. So I guess I guess I could understand that. It like, is... One on a catwalk, one on the runway. Do you know, I would, I'm would. i going to get a body double to turn up for me here. Who would who would want to be my body double? That's the problem. I don't know whether then anyone would want to be. Who's going to replace the cuddly bear? Isn't that what that guy, that caller just called you? It, who, who could replace the cuddly bear? He did call me the cuddly bear. The caller earlier, Stephen in Manchester, did refer to me as the big cuddly bear. And I am, I'm here, I'm here for it. I'm absolutely <laughs> living for it. Absolutely uh, loving it. Now, hey, um, yesterday I was talking, and this is such great news. Um, I'm very excited by this jam. The jam, you know the jam? Do you know the jam? I, I actually don't give a jam about this story, but I'm happy to participate because oh, it's you. Can't, can't we just talk a bit about the jam? Because... This is momentous, right? Because we have slagged them off to high heaven for doing absolutely no work for as many years as we can remember and literally, you know, turning up to half a recording at Spotify or sitting on a sofa bitching about their family. And that's been the whole work that they've done. However, Montecito, American whatever it's called, Do Nothing Riviera Orchard place, have come up, this is Meghan Markle, with 50 jars of jab. That's hard work. That is hard work. That's strawberries, that's sugar, that's cleaning the jars, that's putting the lids on them, that's printing the labels, sticking them to the jars. That is hard work, Kinsey, isn't it? Look, the label is peeling off right there. <laughs> um, you know, Tra Tracy Ross, Diana Ross's daughter, who's also an actor, she posted hers and there were dead flowers in her basket. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't think that this is the aesthetic Megan's going for. Also, also, PSPS. Yes. If you are looking to still buy your own American Riviera Orchard dot whatever because Megan did not secure hers, there are plenty available. I have purchased American Riviera American Riviera Orchard dot today. That is my personal URL. You can head over to American Riviera Orchard dot today. Uh, it forwards you to a T-shirt that I made for Catherine that uh, that is that don is donated to cancer research. So if you are in the market for an American Riviera Orchard URL, there are plenty still available. I absolutely love this. And of course, um, what this has led to is, which I love this story, apparently um, uh, this has led to King Charles and the Dutchy Originals jam having a massive spike in sales. So people are saying, oh my God, jam. Well, let's not buy it from Meghan Markle. Let's buy it from King Charles instead. So this has been wonderful for King Charles. Yeah, let's go to the OG. Let's, and, and you know, where is where is her product coming from? Where, there is little to no information about it. Much more information is known about King Charles, um, where the money goes for King Charles's jam. Uh, but again, like we should stress, she made 50 of these jars and she has delivered them to her influencer friends, the 1% in Santa Barbara, California. We've seen four or five people that have actually posted it. You know, Ellen DeGeneres hasn't posted it. Did she get some Oprah Winfrey? I I bet she did, but she hasn't posted about it. Well, she's so, had so much Ozempic lately. She's not going to want that jam, Oprah. She She's gonna put that's gonna stay locked in the cupboard, you know, while while she's no still ozempicking. Yeah, no carbs. No carbs, so, no jam. But remember that quote from her, I love bread. That's probably no longer yeah. the case for right for her right now. I mean her well, body is desperate for a piece of bread, but unfortunately <laughs> she just she just can't have it. Look, I'm being I'm being nice here because I am gonna say that these jars of jam are the most work that have been done in that Montecito mansion for the last four or five years. And I think that that's, that should be praised, don't you, Kinsey? If if she made them herself, then yes, I will I'll give her that praise. I will say yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, she did them herself. We're, we're very, very happy. She might have made the phone call to get the, the jam delivered. That's hard work as well, Kinsey. So, you know, what? however that jam came to be, well done to Megan. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll talk uh, about Beatrice as well, actually. Princess Beatrice is apparently doing something on uh, Spotify. What does Martha Stewart think about Megan's jam? 
and uh, more trouble for Prince Harry when it comes to some of his charities as well. So we'll discuss it all when we return right here live on Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, oi, right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Oh, it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Morning, it's Christo here on Talk TV, and we've been talking royalty, talking of royalty. Uh, she is our Queen of Hearts. It is Kinsey Schofield. She still joins us live from L.A., and uh, you are our Queen of Hearts. Kinsey and Cuddlebear. Kinsey and Cuddlebear. That's a product line. Don't tell Megan she'll release that as a product line. We'll end up in, in, in American... What's it called again? Oh, American Riviera Orchard. <laughs> American Riviera Orchard. Oh, it's so, so lovely. Now, Martha Stewart, now, of course, do she... Do you guys know who Martha... Do you know who Martha Stewart yeah, is? Yeah, Martha Stewart was, like, the, the queen of, of uh, sort of cookery, lifestyle, all of that sort of stuff. Then didn't she didn't she do some time in jail? And then she, she was <laughs> released. <laughs> Spent a little time in the slammer. Spent a little time in the slammer. I, I, I believe it was stock issues like she she tr some trading issues like she got wind that something was going south and ah, so she insider trading because yeah. she th there was an interesting show that i got really addicted to which was the apprentice she did a series of the apprentice where where she was actually the here it would be lord sugar but there it was the donald trump person i'm sure yeah. i watched that did i imagine that 
I mean, I could, I could definitely see that. But yes, so she is just this all-around guru. She tells you how to plan your parties. What's the perfect playlist? Here's the recipe. Here's everything you need. How should you decorate your table? And she is the OG. She is the original. When Gwyneth Paltrow came along, she was very defensive, saying Gwyneth should just be a movie star. Like, she was not having Gwyneth... Gwyneth's Goop lifestyle brand. She was snarky about that. And um, now insiders are saying, according to In Touch Magazine, that uh, Martha is really irritated and insulted at the idea that she's being asked about Megan's American Riviera Orchard and that that she's even being compared to her. And, and one of my favorite quotes from this person that talked to In Touch Magazine was, if Megan thinks she can come along and replicate the, you know, what Martha has built with barely any experience, simply because she's married to a prince, she better think again. And they said, Martha doesn't put a whole lot of faith into Megan succeeding. Um, but they did say that if Megan proves to be competition for Martha Stewart, she won't hold back in trying to take her down. She's just as competitive as she's ever been. Well, I love the quote as well, that Martha has seen hundreds of Megan types come and go and says they all come with the same self-inflated hype, only to find out it's a whole new ball game when it comes down to brass tacks. I mean, I sort of love the dismissiveness of it. Oh, yet another one comes along and they're not going to take my crown. I mean, Meghan wants a crown. If it's not going to be the actual crown here in the United Kingdom, she'll, she'll try and take Martha's. Well, Martha's not, over her dead body, Martha's not going to give up that crown. And Martha is having this very bizarre way of evolving into pop culture. I mean, first of all, she survived jail time. She came out of it unscathed. You would not imagine that the world would accept her back. You know, it, it, it was a no-brainer. And now she has this relationship with Snoop Dogg. They have, like, they do, like, cooking specials together. They have cookbooks together. Uh, she, you know, she does all of the roasts, the comedian in roasts where she's absolutely hilarious and they all pile on her for spending time in jail but she just is still very cool you know there is no ageism when it comes to martha stewart uh, so the fact that she is basically willing to go head to head with Meghan markle is <laughs> it's comedy i wonder uh, i wonder if she was tough in jail i wonder if she was top dog you know, oh, well, for uh, sure. She, she totally was, wasn't she? Um, 100%. I, uh, uh, sh should, we, should, we, should we trigger Kinsey? I'm going to trigger Kinsey. All right, just watch, ladies and gentlemen, watch this. This will send Kinsey under, OK? Because, of course, we were talking about Meghan having the crown, but, of course, you know, with the sickness and everything that's happening in the royal family and um, with uh, Prince Harry and Meghan, um, you know, not far down the list of succession, imagine that we ended up with King Harry and Queen Meghan. Why are you doing that? What is what are you doing here? What are you do, what are you talking about? I'm just saying that that is something, you know, who knows whether that could happen. We might have to call on them to step in and be the next king and queen. What, what do you think about that, Kinsey? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. She's gone. She can't she can't bear. She can't even entertain the thought. She can't even look at me. She's so horrified. She can't even look at me. I'm sorry, Kinsey. I won't, I won't do that again. Isn't it crazy, though? Because I, w I met some people from the UK on my boat today, and they were like, "What? what's going on with Harry and Meghan? And I tried to explain to them, they are shut off to the world. They are very protective. Uh, you know, they you don't see them at the grocery store. You know, they're not, I think, in a little bit they're involved in their community, but, you know, very they're very protective of their space. But they managed to stay in the papers. I mean, even this idea of, Harry's changed his address on this paperwork. Harry is an American. Harry has given up the UK. I mean, it's just like they can't escape it. And a lot of it is on them because Megan, that was Megan's intention when she sent 50 jars of jams to the 1% in Santa Barbara. But it's publicity. It's the publicity that they claim they don't want, that they then exactly. do everything to court. Because if they wanted, if they wanted to be secluded and and to not have media attention, that is very, very achievable for them, without a doubt. 
Right, what? because I really felt like Prince Edward and Sophie had that for a long time. When they decided to give up Sophie's PR firm, when he gave up his Hollywood aspirations, they did decide to go all in on the family, but they took a step back and yeah. just raised their children in silence. Yeah, well, do you remember when Meghan gave the interview to The Cut magazine? Was it The Cut magazine? And said, oh, you know, we had to leave the UK because could you imagine all of the press photographing the children being picked up from school, school and going to school? Yeah. And that was just an outright blatant, I'm sorry to say it, lie because there is an arrangement it is only arranged photo calls when you ever see the children uh, going in and out of school like maybe on the first day or or if there's a school nativity where it is pre-arranged by the palace and the palace has said this is an occasion where you can photograph the children but day to day the children going to school are being picked up that's never in the newspapers because it is an arrangement that has been made between the palace and the press. So the idea that Meghan and Harry's children would be sort of on the front page of the sun every day being picked up from school is nonsense. Absolute nonsense. In those photo calls, I don't think they've done since Prince Harry and Prince William were little. I think that they've actually stopped that. And to just confirm your point that there is an arrangement, while there was the Where is Kate trending all over the internet, the Princess of Wales was picking up her children from school and photographers were not shooting her there because of the arrangement. So, I mean, people, we knew exactly where Kate was. <laughs> Kate yeah. was at school picking up her kids. And also, um, the, the when the photo was taken of uh, uh, Princess Catherine when she was in the car, you know, with, with her mother in, in being picked up in, in, in the car, but it was quite a grainy image and it wasn't an official image. I think pretty much all the newspapers here in the United Kingdom didn't print it because it wasn't an image that was approved by the palace. Now, I'm not saying that the newspapers have always acted perfectly. Of course they haven't. Of course there have been photographers that have been inappropriate um, here in the British press. But I have to say that, that they are far better than they were. And this idea that Harry and Meghan would have had to have pulled their children out of school or anything like that is absolute nonsense. OK, let's talk about um, Beatrice because... Um, you know, this might be some good news for that wing of the family after scoop and all of that sort of stuff. But um, what's happening with Princess Beatrice and Spotify? Well, basically, she's just quietly establishing a relationship with them. Last week, she did. She hosted uh, a conference at Spotify where they discussed the future of technology. She has two jobs that I didn't know about where she is heavily invested in technology and, and the future of, of, you know, the digital space. So she did, a, she hosted kind of a panel discussion at Spotify about where things are going. Um, the Daily Mail hints that she is quietly establishing a, a rapport with the company. Who knows? You know, her mom has a podcast. So, you know, Beatrice could very much, Princess Beatrice could very much launch her own um, as well. But I feel like th the tone of the article is Beatrice having this great relationship with Spotify, but trying to keep it quiet, afraid that it might upset Prince Harry and Meghan Markle because, you know, they were so publicly humiliated by that failure. Yeah. And they also just, just were lazy. I mean, that's what Spotify executives essentially said, that they were lazy uh, grifters. Um, let's talk about Prince Harry's African charity. This was a story that came out in the last 24 hours where um, there was an investigation that was uh, carried out regarding abuse, alleged abuse by former and current staff at the African Parks charity, with one former ranger claiming that he and his colleagues beat suspected poachers as they were tied up and dangling in the air. I mean, this is a horrible story that just keeps getting worse and worse. It's not just physical abuse. It's not just torture, but it's also sexual abuse. But one thing that I took away from this new investigation is that African Parks bosses, while Harry is... I think, you know, what Harry and Meghan said about the royal family is basically silence is... What, what did they say? Silence is... It, it, it's it, almost like an admission of guilt. Endorsing. And it, no, they said that it was an endorsement. Yeah. That the fact yeah. that the royal family didn't take up for Meghan, it was an endorsement of the harassment. Well, Harry's silence in this African Parks drama, 
I mean, is it not basically an endorsement? And so what's interesting about this new investigation is that they reveal that African parks, the bosses, have allegedly debated whether Harry was still a useful connection, was still a valuable asset to them after his departure from the royal family. And they don't necessarily want him, although, you know, he was promoted as uh, to the governor, the governing board of directors last year. So I thought that that was interesting that they that they're not even necessarily sure that they want him on board when he could and should be screaming from the rooftops yeah. that this uh, can't happen anymore. Well, I, I mean, I should say that's by sort of Harry standard. Um, you use the word endorsement based on what he'd said about the royals. You're quite right. Uh, just to say African parks have said that um, they receive funding, all of which requires detailed vetting and that the report into all this abuse was from an author that was biased and that it was uh, deeply flawed. But of course, there are many, many more questions that need to be answered about and this. And other people reporting about this. Yes. Other pe it's not just this one person. Uh, listen, kids, we've got to leave it there, but always wonderful to talk to you. That's Kinsey Schofield with her Right Royal Roundup on is right royal roundup and coming up in the next hour uh, we've got ingrid tarrant she's looking at the newspapers we'll talk about the paper mile plans angela rayner and much more it's talk tv this is talk tv Never mind the balance, a brand new look at all things politics from The Sun with me, Harry Cole. Watch my big end of the week with no stone unturned. Every Thursday evening, exclusively with The Sun. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
morning. It's Christo here on Talk TV. How are you? Thank you very much indeed for your company this morning. Lots that we're talking about. Sidi Khan and his pay per mile plans, apparently. Uh, we'll talk about that this hour. We'll talk about Angela Rayner, whether this continues as well. Just a boil. I'm going to stop you flying anywhere this summer, apparently. So we'll talk more about that. We've got Ingrid Tarrant here as well. She's going to talk about your GP. We've got loads of stories for you. As always, live, it's Christo, and it's right here on Talk TV. And just spray the eco-freaks with itching powder. That'll move them on. This is the story this morning. Apparently, Just Up Oil are planning some serious disruption at our airports this summer. So if you're planning a summer holiday, good luck with that. I mean, Ingrid Tarrant, TV personality, broadcaster. You're a bit of an eco person, aren't you? Yes, I recycle. I'm in very recycle. into that. Yes, I've given, I stopped recycling now. Mm. And Well, I, I do still recycle, but I hide my normal rubbish in the recycling because they've stopped the collections of the normal rubbish. I know, but you've got to confront your council about that. Uh, oh, I have been. Oh, I did the, yeah, I did the, the, the whole consultation. 90% of people were against it. Now, now, unfortunately, Lambeth is just a feral mess of overflowing rubbish bins and, and, and rats. and Rats, and, and, that's the uh, problem. Uh, and then the rats will attack the foxes. And crows, um, because the bins are open now for people. I mean, I've got mine in a bin cupboard, but they're open. The crows are getting down and sort of picking into the, 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 the black bags. There's rubbish strewn everywhere. It's a disgusting mm. dump. Um, and um, so, uh, but 90% of people were against it, so that's why the recycling doesn't work. Anyway. Mm, anyway. Because we can't talk about my bins again. No, 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 we can't, we can't, we can't. No, <laughs> we can't do a whole hour on my bins. We, we, will, we, we could do an hour on my bins, but we're not going <laughs> and to. And the rest. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to. Um, the, uh, but what, what do you think about Just a Ball taking this action uh, uh, against people's holidays this summer? If, of course, it goes ahead and they, they manage to disrupt the airports, what do you think? Well, I'm absolutely dead against it. Um, I am very eco-friendly. I do also love travelling, so that sounds very hypocritical. It's not. Um, but, you know, they need to look at the aircraft. They have become very conscious of their CO2 emissions. Most of them have lowered them enormously. I don't know if the all of them have. The engines on planes now are so much quieter as well than they used to be. They're so much better mm. than they used to be. Well. And travel's important. We need to have um, um, global movement to understand and appreciate other people's cultures. But also, a lot of countries depend on tourism for their economy. 90% of a lot of countries' uh, um, income depends what, what on the you, tourists. What do you think about what's happening then in the last 24 hour on the uh, on the Canary Islands? Have you seen that story? I have. Do you know, I have. And uh, I and, find and if it you, really if you don't interesting. know what this is... And, and we sort of misrepresented it a little bit yesterday, but I didn't. Ryan Mark did, who was here, who I love. But he was saying that, that the Canary Islands were protesting about British tourists going there. It's not about British tourists. No, it's, it's against any tourists, tourists that yep. are actually going um, there. And they're saying, look, it's been overdeveloped. The locals have been sort of left out of, of any of the, the good things that tourism have brought. Because, of course, I think it's about... Well, there are different figures, but about 35 to 40 percent of the Canary Islands GDP comes from tourism. But unfortunately, a lot of uh, residents in, in the Canary Islands actually have nowhere to live. They're homeless. They're living in caves. They're living in tents. And caves? They are. <laughs> Does it really say caves? Yeah, it said caves. Um, I, I didn't read the caves and bit. I got the tents and caravans. So basically, they have nowhere cars. to live. Mm. And so it's 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 really... You know, the residents are essentially saying, look, we've got to stop this tourism because mm. our islands are being ruined. It's all been overdeveloped, but also and the benefit the isn't being given to us. Yes. Well, the, the, the uh, benefits to them and all the rest of it, uh, you know, yes, that's, that's uh, to me, the most important thing is that it's ruining the island. Um, they're about to build a five-star high-rise hotel on the last virgin beach that's there. Now, it's the ecosystem. It, it's so many things. I mean, here they're sort of saying we're put, that um, uh, we cannot forget these people who are putting their lives at risk for our Earth because they've gone to a starvation diet day, yeah, day I think, 10. I think 10 or 11 of them. 40% um, and... of the jobs are tourism, though. But in 2023, nearly 14 million tourists visited the seven main islands 
and that is six times more than the population of 2.2 million. So these people feel like they're being no, overrun. overrun and we know what that feels like in this country, don't we, when the little boats come in? Yeah, but at least the tourists leave. <laughs> yeah, at least they leave. <laughs> they leave. You're quite right. But, uh, but the, the thing that's, you know, because I know a lot of this from um, Mykonos, uh, one mm. of my favourite places in the world. I haven't gone for years. I used to go 20, 25 years ago to Mykonos. Um, and, you know, it's a really small island off Greece, quite, you know, Zhuzhi, it used to be the gay island. And is, it, is it not anymore Well, still? it is, but, I mean, it's been overrun by everyone now, mm. really. But, of course, they don't have... There's a big debate going on there now about the infrastructure because since it's become really popular with influencers in the last few years, since it's become really, really zhuzhi, um, you know, they, they literally don't have the infrastructure. It's gridlocked where people are trying to go out in the evening. It's mm. overrun by people. And... Of course, you know, a it's lot almost of... a nice problem to have, but it's gone too far. Yeah, it, 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 it's probably gone. But, you know, that this is exactly what's going on in Devon and Cornwall. Exactly the same thing. I mean, it's on our doorstep as well. But then but then my argument is that, that Devon and Cornwall, Canary Islands and all of these sorts of things, I understand the point of view of the people there, but also they've benefited absolutely massively. Yes, they have. But there's a tipping point now. So all these hotels and tourism has been built up because of the tourists. But now it's got to the point where actually it's going to damage the environment. The beaches, there's so much pollution. Um, the, the building of this new um, big five star hotel, um, the beaches are going. You know, the building culture is globally but I, I a problem. I don't think that this is an environment story. Though. I think the thing that is, I mean, it's a part of it. Oh, I think it's Don't a Don't get me part. wrong, and the demonstrators the are sea, saying it's a part the of it. pollution. But I think the thing that is getting them more angry is the pressure of costs and housing as well, because what's happening is that and the tourists wages. are all there, uh, their wages aren't up, but everything goes up in price when the tourists are there. Mm. And also because people want holiday homes, because people want to rent out their homes, because there is so much density of building, they can't afford their houses. Mm. That's and the that problem. is part of the argument. To me, I'm more focused on um, what it's doing because once those hotels are up, it's gone. It's gone forever. That beach has gone forever. The land has gone forever. What about a sustainable forever. hotel? What about a hotel that's like an, an eco-hotel? It's space, but it's, it's about space. Yes, eco-hotels, yes, all for it, that, but they can retrofit the ones that exist. But you're taking away valuable space, I open just space. I wonder if there is a, a compromise. I mean, I remember going years ago to Fraser Island in Australia, uh, Fraser Island is is sort of an unspoiled part of Australia, and you can't take plastic on there. And when you is that go, where the wombats are? Oh, I don't know. They're definitely dingoes, mm. because you know someone uh, there was a dingo that tried to get to get to my Vegemite. I won't even go into that. Oh. Um, <laughs> is it a euphemism? Yeah, <laughs> I wish it were. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, it's this it's this eco island that you can only go on with a backpack. And I took wheelie luggage. It was, it was oh dear. Oh, oh, I can just see you. <laughs> <laughs> Why I, does that not surprise I me? I took wheelie Samsonite luggage on my geography field trip when I was 16. We oh, went to the, oh, we, instead of a backpack? Yeah, we went camping on the Isle of Wight and, I, and everyone would like have their tents and everything. I brought wheelie luggage and a vanity case. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. So I had to check into a hotel because the, 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 the teachers were like, what are you doing? So I was trying to go over the hills Did with they my kind case. of like keep their distance from you completely <laughs> as well? And then I went and we don't know him. It's nothing to do hotel, with us. He's not our pupil. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, wheelie, wheelie sabs. And that was when, you know, there used to be the sort of like, it was a, a hard-sided, because my mother, this was like in the in the sort of late 80s, early 90s that she'd bought all of this. My mother went and bought, like, when my parents had a bit of money, they went and bought matching cream Samsonite suitcases, Ooh, uh, which were made it. monogrammed. Ooh. <laughs> We, CS. Uh, we've still got it. We've so still got the. Here ball. comes CF. Yeah, so here comes cream. CF with his cream and with red accoutrements. <laughs> Samsonite hard side kiss. But it was the one where you pulled up a handle and it was only the back wheels. You know, it wasn't like these trolley oh, cases. Yes. From now. So you had to be really careful when you were putting it along. And uh, yeah, so so anyway, when I went to Fraser Island, I digress. Um, yeah, you couldn't take any plastic on there. All the you had to go camping. When you went to the loo, you had to sort of you know dig it in a hole. It was not nice. Um, <laughs> it was all that sort of stuff. And how you, long ago are you talking? That's uh, I mean, not I, the eighties now. No, no, this Much was later. twenty years ago. I went mm. there, yeah. and um, you know, I was a mere slip of a child. I, I went there when I was sort of travelling to sort of uh, 
uni years, mm. teenage years. And um, I... But it was amazing because it was the, mm. the, it was the balance between... Very, very between, responsible, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's still the same now, but it was the balance between it, people being having access to this amazing part of the world, mm. but also having to do so in a respectful way. And I wonder whether that's... With all eco-stories, we should be trying to get that balance. Yes, I think that that is happening an awful lot now. But I remember with um, Botswana... Um, they recognised this many, many years ago, and I'm talking probably sort of like 20 years ago as well, and um, that they were um, upsetting and unbalancing the wildlife, but particularly sort of like because people are going there on safari mainly. Um, so what they did to reduce the number of tourists, they put up the prices, but they are super, super um, responsible with everything to do Maybe with that's the, what, but then the problem with that is that it really makes it very very exclusive and then people yes, don't get the chance but to the thing is the i wildlife. get it with that i absolutely get it with the wildlife because you because it's spooking them and it's you know the breed it was upsetting the breeding patterns as well yeah which well then is, that, that, um, that has to that does have to take priority now mm. what have you got there you've brought something in what is well that? It's um, it's National Tea Day today. Is it? Yes. It's also the Queen's birthday. So I've just gone a little bit of a theme here. Because you know, like, I like to As in the late Queen. It was her birthday, wasn't it? Yes, Yes. she was born on 21st of April. So this is Royal Blend Tea. Fort and Mason. Leaf. Wow, so it's leaf tea. Leaf tea. Wow. So I'm just going to celebrate. Where's that milk from? Home. Oh, is it? Yes. Because the milk here is horrible. It's like UHT stuff. So what is this? Is this from so one of here. your cows? Yeah, I wish. Or a goat. <laughs> oh, it's not a goat. So <laughs> no, you put, so wow, that's... look at that. Look. Let wow. So if, if anyone is listening along, there's leaf tea in the teapot. Is that your leaf? So that's your own teapot? I own teapot. Now, do you put the milk in before or after? I put the milk in after. <laughs> so do I. But, you know, there's the um, tea museum. I can't remember what it's called. Is it called the Brabham? Tea museum or something. All right, you have, to, oh, you have to sit back down to be next oh, to the microphone. Oh, sorry, sorry. There yes, of course. I honestly, I forget. Yeah, I no, forget that's all right. That, um, we just we can hear you, but you're just more off mic. I know, I know. So you, I, I hope that milk's fresh. Yes, it's completely fresh from this morning. All right, that's good. Um, um, oh, do you want to pour in your own? No, no, no. That's all right. Do you, you can, trust me? I, I trust you. But hang on, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the colour. Let me have a look at the oh, colour. Okay, well you can have mine if it's wrong. Let me have a look at the colour. I haven't hang done on. mine I'm yet. Reaching over to get it. Oh, no, that's a nice colour. Is it a good colour? Yeah. I want a tiny bit more. I might have a little bit more. Can I have a yeah. tiny bit more yes. milk? Just to look, just pour it in. Oh, oh God, the producer's having an absolute oh, episode. Because he thinks, thinks we're going to pour spill. it everywhere. I've been extremely clumsy this morning. And actually, I've and been, no, I've been scattered. walk into a door this morning? Yeah, I was trying to pull a door that you have to push. I was really, really pulling it. Okay. And then I left my phone and makeup. Oh, God. And then what happened? Then I couldn't um, work the hot water tap. So, oh, well, jo- Johnny didn't even so know it Johnny existed. So Johnny did it, I know. Thank you, Johnny. All right, so this is... Right, um, have you had a sip, by the way? No, I'm going to have it now. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Tea Day. National Tea Day. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I want, I want Fort Lauderdale Mason leaf tea from now on. Maybe that's the problem. No, you see, I'm making an exception for you this morning. I've heard. Because you know now, tea is not my drink. I'm repulsed by tea normally now. Because it's summer. Because it's summer. This soon is as what the Johnny weather, told me. As soon as the weather turns, tea is no longer but it a hasn't drink. Turned, it's turned back. No, it's, it's, uh, I don't know what happens to my body, but I start... <laughs> my body changes. <laughs> I've noticed some changes to my body. <gasps> I'll tell you what I am. I'm trans tea. Trans tea. <laughs> so what do you drink instead? Just coffee. coffee. But I know when but the season changes. this is such a changes. strange thing, because and, tea is really more... A summer drink. Tea is a comforting winter drink. That is delicious tea, I have to say. Tea no, it's not is too a... strong, is it? Because it's probably brutal. No, I like bit. strong tea. Oh, I like it strong and milky. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, how that's... I like tea. Oh, exactly the way I yeah, like it. Yeah, and when pe- when you say you want strong tea, when you say you want milky tea, people think you want it weak. I know. You don't. You want it strong. Oh, it makes you feel sick if it's weak. milky. I like, I'm very particular with my tea. I like the mug warmed. First, oh, usually. I'm exactly the same. Um, uh, so I make it at home. I warm the mugs first, mm. or actually, uh, china cups. I prefer it out of. Oh. I don't because I think it tastes nicer. So tea in a china cup, um, a proper china teapot. You warm the teapot first. You warm the cups first, 
um, you then um, put the tea bags in and, 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 and fill it up. Or actually what I do is I fill up the water, then I put the tea bags in so you don't get foam. Then... Do you? Yeah. Because but sometimes it gets foam. Sometimes when you do, when you it gets it gets a bit foamy. That's part of infusing it and getting no, all I don't the flavour out. Don't want the foam. Well, I don't get foam. Well, I t- I've got a hot water tap though, so, so I think that, that, it oh, doesn't doesn't it goes a bit give foamy. me foam. It gets a bit foamy when you put the tea bags in. But if I put the water in and then drop the tea bags in, no foam. But then you've got to keep it in a long time for it to infuse, and by which time yeah, it gets but a I bit put, cold. No, because I've got the tea cozy over it. And you've I got a tea cozy over a cup. Oh, the whole the pot. Yes. Over the whole pot. Is it knitted? Yeah, uh, it's it's or not crocheted. knitted. It's not. What is it's, it? It's, it's, I don't know what it is. Felt. It's, it's John Lewis. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, it's a. Is it quilted cotton? Yeah, it's quilted. And then uh-huh. I, 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 and I actually, if we're having a cup of tea myself and my partner, which we have a late night cup of tea, usually decaf if it's late night, but if it's early evening, I bring it in on a tray. We have the two cups, and do I do it properly. Um, I do enjoy a hobnob. I do enjoy a, a hobnob. Sometimes I, I overindulge in the old mm. hobby nobbies, though, okay. I have to say. You know, the hobnob was the first McVitie's biscuit that didn't have the logo on. Is it? So, OK, let's think. Rich so tea, had, digestives, yeah, all that. of those, all have McVitie's written the on digestive. it. Digestive, oh, yes, they did. Yeah. And the Marie, whatever they what called. Is your, what is your... your? I mean, this is very local radio. What's your favourite biscuit? <laughs> what favorite is your favourite biscuit? biscuit? Hmm... Um, God, that's a hard... I think I like chocolate-coated um, digestives. I mean, um, I love this. You actually chocolate. thought more about that than you did about the ecosystem collapsing in the Canary Islands. Oh, dear, isn't that terrible? <laughs> that, yeah, <laughs> you caught me on yeah, the on You the pack gave more foot. thought to your favourite <laughs> biscuit than you did about the collapse well, I had to give of you the an ecology <laughs> of the world. I didn't want to regret what I said. <laughs> Um, yes, I uh, I like a uh, I, I like a, a, a hobnob is lovely, but I can't be trusted with them. I can't be trusted with any biscuits. Do you dunk? Of course, yes, absolutely. Um, See, I think it's nice. Do you to double dunk? dunk? Yes, but I don't really. But but I'm not. Do you a double dunk. dip? Do you know I double dip, but yes. I always turn. The unbitten. Well, you know, you want to double dip on one side, and then it's nice to turn over and double dip on the other. Oh yeah, but then you're you're transferring germs, aren't mm, you? I suppose. So. But then you unless know, you've got your some own. would say that ship has sailed. Oh, well, um, yes, that's true. But no, I do. I double dip, but I just do boop like this. Take like a bite, that. then I turn it over and put the unbitten side down. I think I down. think it depends as well on on the biscuit, because do you know. I'm saying the word biscuit, and I feel like I'm saying something really naughty because I can't say that word in front of my dogs. <gasps> so I usually have to say at home. Because you, 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 you fancy them with biscuit. A, yeah, because they know. So if I say the word biscuit, they're what ears, about walkies? No, walkies. They don't. They don't care about being walked. Dee Dee does. Dominique Devereaux, but Dolly is a, a, a naughty Dolly. little Shih Tzu, and she doesn't give two hoots about being walked. But yeah, they. Um, uh, so it's really weird saying biscuit out loud. <gasps> it sounds like a swear word to me. Um, so you just do the B word. The B word. We say mm. the B word. Always say. We sort of mouth it because mm. they'll know. But I, absolutely, the um, for me, I don't like a chocolate coated biscuit in a tea. Well, you see, I do, but I I'm not really a dunker. Occasionally, I'll go for the dunk, and I do really like to see the chocolate just kind of go because it, it goes a little bit. Paler yeah, in colour as well, and then you catch it just before it goes into your tea. Oh, see, I'm not. I'm not. My, oh, it's good timing. I love a hobnob. I think hobnobs are delicious biscuits. Mm, yeah. I think inventing those or anything with oats is delicious. But for me, the biscuit that I can literally eat a packet of without even thinking about it is Marks and Spencer's digestives, because they're made mm. with demerara sugar, so that they're really <gasps> crunchy. They're Gosh. not like I. I don't. Since you then, really it's really going to the ingredients, it don't you? Spoils mm-hmm. it spoils you for normal McVitie's digestives. Once you have a Marks and Spencer's digestive, a normal McVitie's digestive is is not. Well, good I'm enough. really surprised that there's a better than McVitie's who were the originators, yeah. and it's all to do with the sugar. It's the sugar. So, are you it's, saying it's, that the other one is just white refined? Yeah, I, I think so because it actually has written on it with demerara sugar, and if, and they're much more crumbly. I'm going to look. They've got at a bit McVitie's. more of a crunch to them. Um, and they're just oh my word! They're del- I could eat them now. I could mm. do my mouth water. Now you know what my my partner's favourite biscuit. Go I, on. I can't say the word biscuit. <laughs> is their 
the burr, you know, the, the butter biscuits. Do you know those Oh, ones? I know. With the, with the, um, uh, the serrated yeah, the edge, it looks yes. like a stamp. Yes. Oh, I my know. word. He absolutely loves them. He gets very excited by them. And they're just literally <laughs> butter and salt in you put them. it in his Christmas stocking. I don't put them in his Christmas you should. stocking. I should, shouldn't yeah, I? Yeah, you should. I'll remind you closer to yeah, Christmas if you ever invite me back. Yeah, because he absolutely loves those. Absolutely loves those. But do you know another thing? I'm just remembering. The biscuits, and I haven't seen one or eaten one for years, so I wonder if they still make them, but they were round and they were kind of like a caramel colour glaze with peanuts oh. on the top. Oh, oh what are they? I can't remember, but they were good. Do you know, I could talk about biscuits all day long. Do you think I our, really um, could? The custard in... cream. Oh, yes. Oh, I'll tell you what. I made a... I made a uh, oh, uh, yum yums. I made a... Yum yums. I made a cheesecake the other day. Did you? And I liked to uh, mix the base. So that's why I ended up with all these Marks and Spencer's biscuits. Ah. So I mixed the base because I, I think a digestive base and a cheesecake is a bit dull. So I mixed it with digestive hobnob, um, shortbread and shortcake. Oh, <gasps> What's a shortcake? A shortcake is like those those Not rectangular long. ones. <laughs> yeah, they're the rectangular ones with sort of the 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 serrated outside with with holes in them. I've never seen one. Yeah, you'll you'll know a shortcake Will when I? you see one. Yeah, you'd know a shortcake. Oh, that tr did you say triangular? Rectangular. Oh, rectangular. Oh, not triangular. No, but it's in a round no, thing. No, 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 that's shortbread. Oh, that's shortbread. Don't don't make me throw you out. That's shortbread, Ingrid. It's not oh, shortcake. Oh, sorry. Okay, so oh, they're chunky, right? Yeah, they're quite chunky. Oh, and that's yeah. the cake, is it? Yeah, shortcake. There's a difference. How deep was your base? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> quite the question. Buy me a drink first, dear. When we return, uh, we'll talk about whether uh, pay per mile charging and these apparent plans from Sadiq Khan will save the environment. And uh, also, as well, we'll talk about whether you want to meet the GP. Um, via the NHS app, your doctor. So all of that and more next on Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, Oi, oi, treat go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. I might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media, having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Ooh, uh, there was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on mm. the fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. 
The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. Yeah, was to it was another era. She was 22, mm. was supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You know, we were just discussing, myself and Ingrid Tarrant, whether it's worth having a car. Because uh, it's interesting, one of the stories today on the front page of the Sunday Telegraph, pay per mile road fees to hit net zero. This is a document that actually I first unearthed and spoke about on this show uh, earlier uh, in the year. And this is this document from back in 2018 where Sadiq Khan said that um, it was exploring pay per mile um, driving charges and in an official report he says that the ambitious plans for decarbonisation are only possible by charging drivers. He also spoke about this by the way in his book Breathe which um, if you read it you'd want to do anything but. We uh, used it for, instead of loo paper didn't we? Did. We? <laughs> we did. Mm, yeah. the, well, I don't think it was loo paper but I think we cleaned the but I think I blew my nose in it. That's oh, what yeah, I you did. blew it up. But I was going to use it instead of blue paper. Um, the pages of the book we're talking about. So apparently there's this fierce row going on because, of course, Sadiq Khan is denying, even though there's an official report saying that he looked into pay-per-mile charging, um, he's denying that pay-per-mile charging is going to be coming in. But, of course, let's not forget that he made the same denials about extending the ultra-low emission zone before the last election and then, of course, went ahead and extending it uh, extended it um the mayor's official transport strategy document said that it, there's a commitment to investigate proposals for the next generation of road user charging now he could have updated that document but he hasn't and um the tories also say that uh city khan has himself admitted that his target to achieve net zero in the capital by 2030 relies on road user charging i mean um, what do you think about this? I mean, the repellent little runt mm -hmm. in the back of his... Uh, he is a uh, repellent little his, runt. He really oh, is in the back yeah, of his... Go I mean, worse he'd have probably than that. written these, these, these plans in the back of the Range Rover that he's been chauffeured around in. Let's not forget that, mm. the five-litre super Mind you, Range it was Rover. originally proposed, apparently, by Boris Johnson oh, when he was mayor. What and, a load and, uh, Richard Sunak he used was to the, spout. Oh, I know. Do you have, you know, digressing just a little bit, but the, the Boris bikes, of course, that was his vanity project, but, you know, yes, yeah, so a lot of people use it. You see now that they've got lime bikes. Oh, yeah, you're about three years late on that one, Ingrid. Oh, oh well, like, honestly, well, like, because I'm a, a, a suburban <laughs> yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, they've got lime. But the, <laughs> the difference is... I mean, I don't like any of them because I don't believe that without any training you should be able just to ride a bike. I believe that you should have some training. The cycling proficiency course, yes, which all and, my children had to do. And I think this do. idea that, oh, my God, you know, look, let's get a bike. But, you know, drunk people do have to get home somehow, I suppose. Oh, yes. I, uh, my but, daughter's um, phone broke a thumb drunk on a yeah. bike. Yeah, they don't, they don't care. Mm. But the problem with line bikes is that they're scattered all over the pavement. They, they are the, the Boris bikes, what you can say about those, as much as I don't like them, is that they are they they can only be hired and returned to docking stations, but the line bikes. The whole point is that you can just get on them anywhere. And what they're free use, of charge? No, no. You, you use the app to find one uh, which is parked anywhere. There is there actually, is a that, docking uh, station. I mean, they shouldn't be abandoned and uh, like are. litter, but that's quite handy because you've always then got to go to a docking station. There might be one just around the corner. Yes, but the problem is Pop though that then you've all. got them scattered yes. all over the pavements, and elderly people, bit, disabled yeah. people, blind people are saying this is outrageous. Mm. People with push chairs, we can't get past because in some parts of central London, uh, they're scattered literally yeah. everywhere. They've got so to it, sort that it, out. Well, but, but they put they put won't away. because wow. of course it's all about you know it's all about the mantra of 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 cycling and that you know if you if you're anti any kind of cycling measure then you know you 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 seem to be some sort of Beelzebub mm. and 
you know, try and have a reasonable cycling debate on, on Twitter and, you know, they'll come after you. I mean, some cyclists are trying to give away my home address. Some cyclists have, have been absolutely repellent. Oh, you've really the upset debate. them then. Yeah, I've really upset them. Yeah. Simply by saying, look, some of the cycle lanes are terrible. Um, uh, but, yeah. And of course, uh, right, they were brought in because I totally agree. by Sadiq Khan. Now, my question is, yes, per, so with this. per mile charging. Now, I'm not really against this at all. Because it goes back to um, the less you use, the less you should be penalised because everybody is, has to pay the same amount regardless of how many miles they do. The big question is how much is he going to charge? Well, that's the problem. And then at the moment, I, mean, I see your point and I don't... If I was being selfish, mm. so I have to pay because my car was over £40,000 when it was new, even though I didn't buy it new and I paid far less than that for my mm. car because it wasn't brand new, it was a year old. But because it was over that price, I have to pay £500 a year road tax. I'm um, in a similar situation. Which yep. is really frustrating. Annoying. Because, I, you know, if you, you didn't buy the car at that price. But for the first five years, it's £40,000. Now, um, so now in, in, in two years of us owning that car, We've done between three and four thousand miles in it. We've, we we really nothing. don't use it at all. So from that perspective, so that's like two. That's fifteen hundred miles on average a year. A year, as opposed to the ten thousand. So we really don't use mm. it very much. So like you would really uh, benefit we would, from. We would benefit. Uh, yeah, but I know. Mile. So from a selfish point of view, brilliant. Mm. Well, if if there was no other road tax, which firstly, by the way, I I don't believe that they they that they might. You know, they might bring in road user charging. In He's addition. saying that he would t um, he would remove congestion charge in ULES, but not many people I don't believe are a word paying that, comes that out anyway. Of that little runs well, mouth. exactly, um, um, that's not very much actually, because a lot of people will avoid that. Well, that's twenty seven pound fifty if you need to pay both though, which is a lot. If you yes. tell that to a nurse or a, a, a person on a, on a lower income that mm. can't afford to change their car. But mm, anyway, the, the more important point is that if I wanted to be selfish, I would say, great, brilliant, I'm going to benefit from that. But there is no way, if you need to use your car regularly, if you're a night shift worker, if you're a nurse, if you're someone who is a delivery driver, if you're someone who is a plumber, a, 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 a sparky, a, a chippy, anything like that that needs to use your car, if you've got children that you need to get to do different schools, mm. if you've got any of that stuff for getting on to work, this is not, they are, there is no way that little runt is going to make it more cost effective for those people. It will end up costing them more, mm. without a doubt. Well, yes, because it's all profit, profit, profit. Of isn't course it, it is, yeah. and it's not going to end up being cheaper than twenty seven pounds fifty per people. But the per principle thing. is good. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I think it is because the because the way that so you've given a perfect example. You still pay your road tax, even though you've only done on average fifteen hundred miles a year for two years. Yeah, maybe, maybe whereas 2000, other people yeah. would have done all right two thousand. Other people would have done twenty thousand. On average, but that's part of being a society. I'm sorry, it is it part is. of being a society, but also at the same time, it's wear and tear on the roads, and it's and it's the pollution and this that but, and the other. I'm not I, get if, too if strung I, up if on I the have to actually, pay but that, but if I have to pay that, so that a nurse gets away with not having to pay that, well, you know, I don't love it, but I will because my worry is. If, but they, it doesn't. It doesn't feed back to to people like that. But it, it just does. doesn't. I don't think it, it does. Like for, for it, so so twenty seven. If you are someone who is a nurse at the moment and you've got an older car because you can't afford to change a car, if you're an elderly person or something like that, and you live within the ultra low emission zone, um, and you come into central London, um, you have to pay twenty seven pounds fifty a day. Mm. Twenty seven pound fifty a day. If you're a nurse on a night shift. I think that that's outrageous. Mm -hmm. Road user charging will end up being more than that. There is no doubt in my no mind. Doubt about it. It no, I agree with you. 50. But if it wasn't, in principle, I think it's quite good. And I don't think it would trickle down. But then why if would you, you bring paid it more, in? I don't think it would trickle down to the, the nurses or the, the, point the is, low income it, it's, people it's, coming in. It would go into a pothole, but it wouldn't even go but into the a pothole. The point is that it's in order to the 2030 goal to make us net zero is about trying to get people to use their cars less. Mm. You're not. If, if if people are using their cars at X amount at £27.50, it's going to have to be more than £27.50 to, to, top make, that, to make it, people use it yeah. less. An average car use of the person who mm. uses it for £27.50. And you do wonder about the electric cars. You see, people have already been penalised by actually getting rid of their other cars. Um, doing well, the, they were all told to buy them. They were. Same with the diesel. 
You scrap, you buy the diesel because it's cheaper. Now scrap them and we'll give you £2,000 back if you're lucky. Yeah, and then the diesels are now the things that you have to pay the, the uh, ULES on. So mm. I'm just putting the blind down because I'm getting a bit blinded by the sunshine. I look beautiful in this light, but it is slightly <laughs> blinding me. It's um, summer, but it's cold out there. It's, it's actually not proper summer uh, yet, So I haven't. find it extremely um, frustrating that this would potentially be brought in. Um, TX Redneck says, what a shock. Sadiq coming up with more ways to milk the wallets of working people. Um, and Jason makes the very fair point. One thing, Christo, why did we bring in a mayor of London in the first place? It just seemed to cause problems. I agree. I don't think we mm. need mayors. No. And mayors are pointless. We've got the Lord Mayor, haven't we? Which is a completely different thing. So maybe we just stick to the Lord Mayor. I think that we need to have commissioners for each city for each major city appointed by the government that work with the government of the day. Appointed by the government? Well, I, I think we should have a choice of who the commissioner is. So, And what would the difference be between a commissioner and a mayor that then? That they, they are not working against the government. And that the that central government... So this is how I would do it. And this is just like fag back at a fag packet okay, sort of idea. OK, let's hear it. But um, as opposed to a mayor... Mm. of a different party or whatever mm. when you elect the party of government mm. it should be the party of government says right birmingham we need a commissioner for birmingham it's a major city it's a big enough city that warrants having a commissioner here are three commissioners we're going to appoint that we, we are thinking of appointing that will be whatever the the party is at the time yeah that will work with us to to secure the interests of Birmingham, just like a mayor would, mm. and to have some autonomy over some of those local decisions, but the money will come from central government. Here are the three. Like when you vote Birmingham in the general election, we're also going to put. You can vote for your commissioner for oh, Birmingham. Oh, it's getting. I can see this going horribly, horribly wrong. I see what you're saying that it should support the. But then, I'm going to say two things here. So, point one on what you're saying, then the government chooses a three that that yes. particular area can have. OK, fine. But I can see that being slightly corrupted. Slightly More corrupted. More so than some of the, the, the mayoral things that we've seen. I mean, mm. would, you not, would you not I don't rather? Think it, I think it still leaves it wide open. But then mm. what about the civil servants? Because I think, because they are the ones to really target, get rid of them unless they are... Whatever the the but um, why, party why, is at why the time. can't you have the structure of the mayoralty that you have now, i.e., you know, the mayor's office with the civil servants within the mayor's office working, but instead of having a a mayor like you have in London, you've got a Labour mayor mm. and a Tory government. So therefore, the Tories blame Sadiq Khan for everything. Sadiq Khan blames the Tories for mm. everything. The Tories don't want London to prosper because it makes Sadiq Khan look good. Mm. Sadiq Khan doesn't want to give the Tories praise for anything in London because it makes them look good. So you end up with this Maybe situation too, yeah, I get what where, you're where, and also the Sadiq, you know, for instance, there are certain projects in London that need to be done that central office of the, of the government don't want to finance because they don't want Sadiq Khan to look good. Whereas if you had commissioners for each city, then they work with the government of the day, which is what surely you want for each city. And okay, then when that government's being... voted out, you have a different commissioner. All right, being devil's advocate, so you have Conservative at the moment with our little runt, um, Sidney Khan, Mayor, Labour. That, in a funny way, is the voice of two sides. So betwixt and between, you might get a fair balance. But I don't think you do. In theory, you should, though. I think you end up and with both sides be, blaming the other. Such, yeah, <laughs> but um, having said that, I'm, I'm being devil's advocate when I say yeah. that. Um, in theory, you would get sort of like perhaps a little betwixt and between, but he has too much power. He has complete power. Well, John is and control, actually, and out. that's where it's where the danger lies. Christo abolishes democracy. You've lost it, commissioner. No, because you get your democratic right to choose which commissioner you want, which is the which no, is, but you haven't at forward. the very beginning because you're saying that the government. Yeah, but you get it choose. nationally. You get it. You get it, but with your general election choice. out of the ones that the, the when I vote in my chosen. general election, I can still vote for my local MP. But when it comes to the commissioner or the mayor, former mayor of the city, they are appointed. The, the choices for that are appointed by the central government. So central government decides. And if and the, so, so the national elections are, reflect the, the 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 shape of each city. That's how I would do it. But at the, at the, currently, the um, the mayor 
will set himself up like we've got now. So we've got Sue Hall, we've got Howard. Yeah, um, well, I'll read them all in um, a second. Yeah. Um, so they are putting themselves forward to be elected. Wouldn't that be the better way to do it? Because they really want to do it. They really want to make well, a change. Well, the commissioners can really want to do it. I'd love to be a commission, the commissioner for London, but working with the government. I don't know, it's just a different idea because mm. I feel like what you have then is that I've made my choice or the electorate have made their choice for who we want running mm. the country. But then you have the, the biggest city in the, the, uh, the, the engine room for the country, mm. London, being run by someone who has a completely different mandate to the government that is in power. I to know, me, that's, that's that completely, completely wrong. It's a complete contradiction. They are, they are going to work against each other, although they might be able to so work then you, the city civilly doesn't, doesn't between prosper. each other. I mean, it all works out. Don't worry if about got... the cronies. Uh, can you imagine? I, I just see it becoming such a corrupt cesspit. Well, it already is. Well, it already it? is. Okay. So we have to just tell you, by the way, because we've been discussing it, that of course Sadiq Khan is standing in the London mayoral election for the Labour Party. We've also got standing Femi Amin for the Animal Welfare Party, Count Binface for <laughs> Count Binface for Mayor of London. Uh, yeah, Ingrid. Yeah. Shh, quiet. <laughs> Rob Blackie, Liberal Democrat, Natalie Campbell, an Independent, Howard Cox, Reform UK, Amy Gallagher, Social Democratic Party, Zoe Garbutt for the Green Party, Taryn Galati, an Independent, Susan Hall for the Conservative Party, Andreas Christoffi for an Independent uh, candidate, Brian Rose, London Real Party, and Nick Scanlon for Britain first. Uh, when we return, we'll talk about the um, NHS Trust, um, who, uh, well, the NHS talking about visiting your GP via their app and whether that's something you'd be happy with. So we'll talk about that next here on Talk TV. <laughs> Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist well, did fail her. We're supposed to, supposed to was have moved on from era. that. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
Uh, good morning, it's Krista here on Talk TV. Now, you may have heard some inadvertent cheering or noises. Uh, ju quiet. Sorry, OK. Quiet, okay, Ingrid. Okay. You are... T t turn her microphone off for this no, section. because I'm please. not doing it again. Uh, you may have heard some inadvertent... Quiet. <laughs> you may have heard some inadvertent cheering or noises made during that last list of mayoral candidates. And obviously, I want to stress that no one in this studio particularly favours one candidate over another. Quiet, Ingrid. Okay, so, okay. therefore, we're just going to read the list again, just to be sure. Femi Amin is standing for the London mayoral election for the Animal Welfare Party. Count Binface, Count Binface for Mayor of London. Can I uh, at the name. No, you can't say anything. Quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you dearly. <laughs> but I'm not reading this list for a third time. Ingrid. No, don't. All right. <laughs> I'm starting again. Oh, OK. And let's I... have, let's, let's play right. a game. You've got to stay quiet for 30 seconds. Oh, OK. All right. And you Brandy. get a prize at the end of it. All right. Standing Ooh. for the mayoral election is Femi Amin for the Animal Welfare Party, Count Binface, Count Binface for Mayor of London, Rob Blackie, Liberal Democrat, Natalie Campbell, Independent, Howard Cox, Reform UK, Amy Gallagher, Social Democratic Party, Zoe Garbutt, Green Party, Taron Galati, Independent, Susan Hall, Conservative Party, Sidi Khan, Labour Party, Andreas Christoffi, Independent, Brian Rose, London Real Party, Nick Scanlon, Britain First. Turn her mic back on. What's <laughs> my present? <laughs> Your present. You promised me a present. You can if have. I get quiet for you can have seconds. the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Honestly, it's like uh, it's like a loose cannon <laughs> in the studio. Okay, um, so we're not going to talk about any candidates or name any no, more candidates when it comes to the London Mayor. So let's talk instead about um, meeting your GP in the Ooh, Middle Ages. This yes. is one of the stories you found. It's from the Sunday Times. Middle-aged people could get regular health checks via the NHS app rather than having to book an appointment with their GP. So instead of actually seeing your GP, there'll be like an algorithm, I think, something along those lines that will ask you questions about lifestyle, alcohol intake, exercise, and prompt you to provide measurements, including height, weight, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels. And that could be done at pharmacies, that could be done in various other places but it's a digital assessment. How do you feel about having a, 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 a digital probing? <laughs> well, I don't know, actually. <laughs> but, no, I will tell you very seriously, uh, the whole thing smacks of um, a kind of insidious, another means of track and trace everything about you. It's more data on you. It's lifestyle. It will all feed in to... Um, controlling and how, how do you think that totally this could be something negative then because they're trying to um you will be penalized going forward in the in what a lot of people were predicting like in in china and places like that you will be penalized if you smoke drink da 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 da, da but you will get sort of like good points if you eat your five but then, but a day how, and so how on would so that on. manifest because itself it will into... impact on your health yeah, no, no, I know that, but but okay. So say that I've put in consistently bad stuff into the app. So I've mm. said that you know I'm overweight, I drink till I fall over, I eat like a horse, all of those things, mm. right? And I consistently do that. Mm. How in your fear will that end up being that I'll be I'll be denied something? How will that be negatively well, affecting? How will the state or the NHS or whomever? be able to, 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 to negatively affect my life? Well, in two ways. One is that you won't get an appointment because it'll be full. It'll keep getting postponed. But the real truth behind it is that you have brought this upon yourself, so therefore you don't deserve it. But the person that's, that's had a, a healthy lifestyle um, can't so be blamed you... for having suffering a heart attack or whatever, whereas a, a heavy smoker or an overweight person with a heart attack... Um, they, it, it's promoting. So you think that there, there's attack. the possibility of some sort of perhaps um, covert secret scoring totally. system between the, the where, where mm. they'll look at the data and they'll say um, because of course you know the opposite argument to that would be well actually perhaps 
you'll end up with more service. Maybe they'll look at the data and they'll say, well, no, look, I don't there are loads of overweight people in, in Carlisle. Let's make sure Carlisle has more ambulances. Let's make sure Carlisle has more no. resources. That's a nice way of looking at it. But I 100% think that there's sinister undertones to all this. It all looks good on the surface. Marvellous, brilliant. This will help everybody. It will reduce waiting lists. It will help, sort of like with the doctors. We won't be um, negatively impacted by strikes, perhaps, so much, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is another agenda. I am convinced of it. I am so mistrusting and untrusting the one, of the, the system. The one where I agree with you, I'm not sure whether I agree with you on this, though I don't know whether you'll get an accurate report from an algorithm, but, but that's I. The one where I absolutely agree with you was, I don't know if you remember the story a few months ago, I don't think it was with you that I did it, um, where they were talking about how you could, the, the, there was a banking app, I think, I can't remember which bank it was, but it was one of the big banks, mm. and via your banking app, they were going to give you um, a monthly carbon report Oh, it wasn't spending. with me on the show. No, that's right, though. And, that's and, part and, of it. And I, I agree. That's really sinister because that is a step away from saying you're going to get a better loan rate mm. because your carbon footprint is lower. And exactly. look at where you've spent and oh, then also all then... these carbon-friendly shops. Oh, well done you. You're going to get a better overdraft mm. than the person next to you who's, you know, it uh, is filling up. everything on you. The smartphones have got so much on us already. You know, I've got, um, talking about, um, you know, weight and this, that, and how it might sort of like feed into sort of um, when you get the right pills even. They, that's how they'll do it as well. Well, this is, we've done this, the algorithm tells us so-and-so, your prescription ought to be so-and-so. It probably is that clever. So then the, the drug pushers come back into the scenario. Do you know, everything about this is a horror you know, story you know, in my mind. Do you know... Um okay this isn't related to the nhs app well it is from for a bit actually because my elderly neighbor 91 next birthday oh know, she sounds lovely i amazing. want to meet her one day dear dear friend of mine she's she's fabulous but she's a friend so i was walking home from the gym the other day and she was walking out the front door and she was going down to 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 uh, st thomas's hospital and so as i always do i said would you like me to walk you to the bus stop so i walked her down Aww. to the bus stop and we get to the bus stop, and st now, and I've noticed this on a few now, they've got rid of the bus countdown. Oh. You know, the, the thing yeah, that tells you... Yeah, how many minutes yeah, before yeah. it arrives. Um, and so you've got to go onto the app <gasps> and find out when the next bus is coming. There you go. So they're already monitoring your travel. And, and, and so from that perspective, I just thought, how on earth... She doesn't have a smartphone. She's got, like, a, a brick. <laughs> that she doesn't have a smartphone. She's 91. Mm. And so... Um, and she was like, oh, where's the countdown? And so I had to go on the app and I said, oh, right, you know, the the, 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 the bus is coming, you know, it'll take you there. It's, it's coming in two minutes, actually. What would she, so what would she do with this NHS thing? Mm. Uh, do you know what SMART is an acronym for? Surveillance, metering, oh, monitoring. Mm. Um, I don't know what okay. else. And recognition tracking. Good oh. morning. Morning. No, Morning. no, there's something else. That, no. I don't know. I was making no, it up. No, it wasn't. But that's very quick and very good. Thank you very much. I will look it How up. I can't believe I shouldn't have started even that sort no, you of um, statement. Really. No, you shouldn't. Not unless couldn't. you can finish. <laughs> um, uh, good, morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, mean, I just don't know if I like all of this tracking and knowing what I agree. I'm up to. Recording so, so this, and the technology. thing I hate is on websites when it says accept all cookies and you try desperately not to do mm. that and then the default is you accept all cookies. Okay, oh, I go the whole way through. Why do they keep asking me? I know. I know. Absolutely. Websites have been on twenty times before. I totally agree. I totally agree. It drives me insane. And but you know of why? They track they... Everything you do. Yes. And also, the thing is, they say it makes it easier for when you next time go on. But I would does, rather. But it, but... it does, but I would rather make it difficult and start through the whole process again. Would you? I don't. Yes. I'm, so I... I go through it. Sometimes there's pages yeah. where you I have know. to flick it across, go, no, but no, like no. This morning, I was in a hurry. I don't want to talk to them about cookies. I need mm. to just get the information I want. And it makes you hungry. <laughs> and it makes you really hungry. <laughs> and then I ate a whole. <laughs> Whole bag of cookies. Um, <laughs> so, will you be talking? Presumably, you'll be talking about this NHS sort of app story. That we might weren't come up. going to, but I think we'll obviously do it. Given that I've seen it now in the papers, we were going to talk particularly about Suella Braverman calling for the Met Police chief 
to quit. I'm not sure that really is the answer, oh, but we're also that, talking this, but, asking Jewish people to leave. The asking area. Jewish people because they're obviously an incitement to violence just by existing. Um, which is absolutely unacceptable. Well, I the same line with Just Stop Oil. Well, so, Someone and then, the and then you've got Galloway, you know, you've got Galloway, and uh, he's got a candidate in the West Midlands who, has, who says he's been sent by Allah to stand in the election. And on the way here, there are Palestinian flags on the lampposts, on street furniture down the route of the London Marathon. I want to know what is Tower Hamlets doing about that? That is not And I acceptable. wonder what's going to happen on St George's Day in a few days' time I if you put up a British flag. Totally agree. Probably not allowed. I totally agree. Well, you're not allowed to put it on street furniture. It doesn't mm. matter what flag oh, it uh, is. Ingrid, so very, very quickly, because I know David's got to speak, but uh, Ellie has asked, are you going to St George's Day march on Tuesday? Oh, I will, maybe. Ellie's asked because she wants to shake your hand. Oh, <laughs> so, so one year we actually yeah. went to a pub in the east end of London with our St George's flags. We used them as tablecloths. It was absolutely Racist. glorious. Well, that's the problem. Yeah, isn't it? Emily Thornbury obviously thinks I am. Uh, also got another doctor in. Raj is in today as well. So Raj three Passon. doctors. Three doctors, apparently. Oh. Someone's just messaged saying uh, there are more doctors in this <laughs> studio than in the A&E that they've just Yeah, uh, but the, all three of you could work on him and you still wouldn't get through all his yeah. ailments because no, you're no, a hypochondriac, aren't you? I'm not a hypochondriac. I've yes, got these... Pro- I actually... No, no, no hypochondriac. And you're a young you. man. Well, I've relatively. Got, I've got, you know, hereditary gout. I've got... Um, a, hereditary gout, OK. Yeah, gout is hereditary. Right, yeah. It is. Mm, mm. How it about is, your is diet? It, How's um, your diet going? I had gout when I was <laughs> slim and super fit. That's what I got it. Um, I've got... A, I've got... Oh. I've got I've got to just tell you, we're going to talk about the WHO oh, pandemic. We're moving on from my ailment. There we are. <laughs> uh, the WHO pandemic treaty. Molly oh, Kingsley is yes. going to come and talk about that because I don't think people realise what's about to happen.